There's a dispute out there in the fishing world regarding the stretch of monofilament and fluorocarbon fishing lines. You'll find some information stating that mono has superior stretch qualities over fluorocarbon. And more recently, you'll find many sources that call this a myth. So what's the truth? Stick around to find out. The answer to the question of which line has better stretch capability is actually quite a bit different from answering the question of which has better stretch quality. To understand why, we need to understand just a bit about the behavior of materials. When materials are under stress, they undergo deformity. But not all deformities are the same. In fact, there are actually two types of deformity that occur in stages as stress is applied to the material. These are known as elastic deformity and plastic deformity. Elastic deformity is quite simple. Stresses that are applied and then removed during the elastic deformity stage result in the material returning to its original shape and size. This deformity is effectively temporary. We see this in everyday life all the time. Just think about the stretching of a rubber band. By applying stress to the rubber band, it stretches. In doing so, we are deforming it because we're changing its size and shape. And the usefulness of a rubber band is in its ability to return to its original size and shape following that deformity. And its ability to do this is due to the inherent properties of the material it's made of. In contrast, plastic deformity is permanent. The reason for this is that there is now damage being done to the molecular structure of the material. A great example of plastic deformity occurs when plastic wrap is stretched. The wrinkles in the plastic wrap that are left behind after the tension is removed are signs of permanent damage done to the plastic material that make up the plastic wrap. Finally, when the stress on the material becomes large enough and enough damage has been done to the molecular structure of the material, failure occurs. This graph depicts these three phases of stress and strain. Note that in the elastic phase, the relationship between the stress and strain is linear. Once the strain reaches a certain point, the stress begins to slow. This is due to the breaking of molecular bonds within the material, or what we call damage. And as the strain continues, we eventually reach the failure point of the material. The important thing to note is that this curve is unique for each material. For some materials, the elastic region is relatively small, while the plastic region is much larger, and vice versa. So what does all of this mean when it comes to fishing line? While fluorocarbon does stretch quite a bit, it does much of this stretching in the plastic deformation region. This means that although it is stretching, it is also permanently weakening throughout the majority of its stretch. The problem with this as an angler is that we have no way of knowing when this happens. Conversely, monofilament line stretches almost entirely through elastic deformation and therefore doesn't weaken like fluorocarbon. This means that it will return to its original size and shape with little to no permanent damage. So to answer the questions we posed at the beginning of this video, while both lines will ultimately stretch quite a bit, unlike monofilament line, the fluorocarbon often ends up weaker once it has stretched out, making it more likely to break in the future. This is just one of the reasons that fluorocarbon is a great choice for leader material, but loses its appeal as a mainline choice.